Hey guys, what's up? It's David, and today is a very special day. Uh, the Chilean miners are being rescued as I speak. They are, uh, yeah, I believe three of them have been rescued at the time of recording this video, and the fourth one is is on his way. And so, yeah, that is super awesome. And, uh, <laughs> soothing music. I forgot to turn that off. Um, but yeah, and that kind of, uh, helps segue into what I was wanting to talk about which was I was wanting to try to do something new with this game and uh, really it was kind of combining the fun and playfulness that is Minecraft with kind of real life things that we can learn about and uh, so hopefully that works out well and today I thought oh it's getting dark what better thing to do than to talk about mining um, in Minecraft if you don't know one of the many things you do is you mine you dig holes in the wall and you know try to find minerals and stuff like that and I need to turn off the music and so mining, you know, mining with a pickaxe and a shovel is not something that um, hasn't been done before. It was uh, in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, it's basically how they mined for things before they had, you know, the big machines do all the work. And uh, hopefully I was wanting to just shed some light on what that was and maybe uh, put Minecraft in a new perspective for you. And uh, first off, uh, as has been evidenced by real life events, this was very dangerous, just this right here, the mine, the mine shaft, um, it, the leading cause of death among miners is these rocks up here, uh, called boulders, uh, I mean, that's just the name for big rocks falling on people or causing cave-ins, like in the Chilean miners case. I mean, it may not be as specific as just this ceiling rock falling down behind them, but uh, I'm sure someone can correct me and give me the, the very specific example, but yeah, that was part of the big dangers. Also, um, another thing that the miners do was, you know, if you're building the mine shaft this way, oh, hey, look, it's iron ore. You go and you dig for the iron ore. You don't just keep going this way. You follow the vein of ore. And so when you're doing that, you know, you're digging your way through here. And once you get a good little shaft going this way, a little horizontal pathway coming out from the main area that you're digging in, it's called a drift. So a drift is a little area that follows the mine ore. And uh, the dangers of mining weren't always just immediate physical, they were also somewhat chemical. As you can see, sometimes the miners, when they were mining, would be mining in up to three inches of water. And uh, this isn't three inches, obviously, it's a little more, but it's uh, the water came from the ground, obviously. There was ground water if you're mining underground, and uh, the water would drip from the ceiling sometimes. And I know what you're thinking, it's water, what does it matter? I mean, hypothermia? Well, most of the time, uh, a lot of groundwater contains hydrogen sulfide, which is a, uh, a very toxic chemical to humans and uh, I'm, I'm assuming other animals, it's just very toxic in general and so what would happen is this would you know soak into the miners clothes and drip onto their heads and stuff and it would start to, to seep into them and stuff, into their skin this was very bad so some of the smarter mining companies had uh, these little rooms right near the exit of the mine where the miners would go in before they left close the door behind you, be polite and uh, it was like a little locker room. They could come in and they could take a shower, you know, and then go in here and, oh, whoops, they could change their clothes, change out their work clothes. As you can see, our miner here has some very fancy work clothes. He's very successful and put them in the locker and change into their casual clothes. And these were called dog houses, because uh, I guess, um, <laughs> I don't know, inferring that miners were dogs. But uh, yeah, that was something that was very helpful to the miners back in the day. And another thing I wanted to talk about with reference to these mines was uh, a topic called the mules. And yes, this is a cow, not a mule, or a, or a donkey, whatever you wish to call it. But uh, Bessie has been method acting for a long time, and she's agreed to take on the role of the mule. And I don't have the heart to tell her yet that mules do not moo, but uh, let's get on with what we were talking about. So the miners, you know, they get pretty down deep in these tunnels, and they'd be, you know mining for some rocks and some ore and stuff and you know you don't want to carry a bucket all the way back to the entrance of the mine so what you would do is you would have the mine carts obviously and uh, back in the 1800s and before they had oil and stuff oil and electricity and stuff like that to move mine carts and trains and stuff like that they would have to use a uh, mule power the mules would basically uh, be tied to the mine cart and would uh, push whatever ore they had been uh, put in there, or even rocks just to get out of the way, and they would push it back to the surface. They would either push it, you know, over here down to this uh, the shaft where it would be hoisted up, 
or sometimes they would carry it with them, in, rather than being in the way, um, <laughs> all the way back up to the surface on a sloped path. Now they would take it back up near the entrance of the mine shaft, but they would not normally be allowed to go out of it um, just by carrying the minerals back up because, see, what would happen... Oops, I was going to put a little stopper there. Uh, that's how I got the cow, or the mule, excuse me, into here. <laughs> but uh, what would happen is they didn't want to let the mules um, out of here just willy-nilly because these mules spent weeks and weeks and weeks at a time down here in the mines and if uh, if they brought the mules outside in the sunlight obviously it's dark out right now but in the sunlight it would mess with their eyes they could go blind cause all sorts of neurological damage and you know you're out a mule to carry your stuff and if you've been watching the rescuing of the Chilean miners they ha they all have uh, sunglasses on to to simulate not to simulate but to in real life to show that they they don't want any shock to the system and uh, the, Chilean, the Chilean miners had electricity and, a, and some very nice light that the mules didn't have back in the day. But um, the, the idea is still the same, you know, you gotta really be careful with your eyesight if you've been in the dark for a long time. Isn't that right, Bessie? Come on, Bessie. Get, take a bow. Or, or a jump. <laughs> well, that was mostly what I wanted to talk about today, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. You know, comments suggestions, constructive criticisms are welcome, and uh, yeah, today's a happy day, so enjoy it, celebrate, Vive, viva Chile, <laughs> oh man, butchering every other language other than English, it's, it's what I do best, so <laughs> I'll see you guys later, adios. <laughs>